Welcome to part three. We're going to take a program from the Aquarius and put it in this laptop. We'll be using the printer port on the Aquarius and going into a COM port on the laptop. And there are websites out there that describe exactly how to do this. A problem that we're having is that modern computers, and especially laptops, don't have COM ports. Oh, you bastard! Oh, you bastard! They have USB, Universal Serial Bus, which is not the same as a COM port. Back in the day, your computer came with two COM ports, COM1, which was a 9-pin, and COM2 was a 25-pin port. Normally, you would plug your mouse into COM1, and more often than not, COM2 would be deactivated or disabled because you put a modem in the machine, and the modem became COM2. So what we need to do is get a COM port on this laptop. I went on Amazon.com and bought this USB serial adapter. This has a chipset in it. It's not just a cable that's cross-connected between the two ends. Uh, the chipset is a UART, a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter that's built right into the plug. This was $11 or $12. There are some cheaper, but I was afraid the cheaper ones wouldn't work. I'll leave a link to this underneath the video. After I got the cable in the mail, I brought up the device manager so I could look at the ports on my computer. Now it shows two COM ports. These are not true COM ports. These are some kind of Bluetooth ports. One's for an external speaker. I can't remember what the other one's for. So I plugged in the adapter and you can see something changed here. Now initially I couldn't tell what it was but in the middle you can see where it says USB serial converter. So the computer is seeing the device but it's not coming up as a COM port. I looked in the bag that the cable came in and on a piece of paper in teeny teeny tiny lettering it told me I had to go up on the website and download the drivers. Here I am up on the website for the adapter cable. I'm about to download the drivers. You save the driver file to your hard drive. It came in as a zip file. I unzipped it and just ran the executable. I didn't get any message that anything happened. So I went back into the device manager and sure enough I had a COM port. Now since Microsoft no longer supplies HyperTerminal with Windows, and why would they? There's no COM ports on a modern computer. I had to go online and find a terminal program to use. And the one I found was freeserialportterminal.com. This is a real nice terminal program. The free version is slightly crippled, and I kept getting a message saying my session was going to expire in five minutes. And when it did, all I had to do was bring up a new session. There's a link to this terminal program under the video. Now that we've got a data port and a terminal program, we need an adapter for the Aquarius. A guy named Martin Stinoven has made an excellent website concerning the Mattel Aquarius, and it has everything you need to know to make this adapter. We need a stereo plug, and we need a female end to plug into our COM port. So it was back to Amazon.com, and I bought one of these DB9 breakout boxes, which worked very well. And I'll be leaving a link to this under the video. Here's the eighth inch plug that gets plugged into the printer port of the Aquarius. This is what the little breakout box looks like before you hook it up. It's got the corresponding numbers to the pins on it so that there's no confusion. And there was some confusion. I'll show you in a second. This is the wiring diagram from Martin's website. Notice on the DB9 adapter that it's numbered left to right from 1 to 5 on the top. This is how my adapter was wired. Notice it's numbered from right to left, so everything on the top is reversed. It was a bit of an IQ test to hook it up. Here's the completed adapter connected to the 8th inch stereo plug. This is before the DB9 section was put back into its housing. In part three, we saw that one of the tapes had an altitude prediction program on it for model rockets. The goal here is to get this program out of the Aquarius and into the laptop. We can then run it with Aqualite and see how it performs. 
When I was a kid in third grade, my favorite show was Lost in Space. So how about a little bit of melodramatic Lost in Space music while we connect everything together? That turned out to be a pleasant success. It worked out better than I anticipated. I was afraid there wouldn't be any carriage returns and everything would be on one line. Now let's get this text out of the terminal and put it into Notepad. I'll save the program as SD6 since that was what it was originally called on the tape. Now it's time to bring up Aqualite, the Mattel Aquarius emulator. We'll load the file SD6 into Aqualite. Ready? Here we go. Looking good so far. We'll enter a rocket name, Big Bertha. The engine type, D12. The rocket weight without the engine, two ounces. The diameter, two inches. Rocket drag coefficient, 0.75, which is typical. And we'll launch it at an 88 degree angle. And the total altitude is 500 feet. Now that we've got a text file, I'll post it to the Aquarius users group on Facebook. Now, let's try the same thing with that mastermind program. So black means I've guessed the correct digit, and the copyright symbol means I've got a correct digit in the correct spot. I think these arrows are actually supposed to be in the border. I'm picking a number, 5142. What is my guess? Well, I actually already know what the number is that he picked. Well, this game needs some more work done to it. There should only be one black and one white symbol. Well, that's pretty much incorrect. There should only be one copyright symbol and no black symbols at all. Oh, well, it knows there's no eights in it. I would never be able to guess the number with these results.
What's the criteria that it uses to place the symbols on the board? This must be another program I typed out of a book. So maybe it'll be fun to work on it and get it to run right. No, I don't want another round. I'm back with my original Mattel Aquarius and I'm still pondering why it won't read a tape. Now we know from the schematic that the data comes in and hits that large integrated circuit marked PLA1U7 on the schematic and comes in on pin 42, cassette in. Now when the Aquarius makes a sound to the TV, it also sends it to the data recorder. So I've got a plan here. I'm going to make a tape with a tone on it. And then I'm going to bring the tape, the data recorder, and the Mattel Aquarius to my friend Joe's house. Now Joe has an oscilloscope. We'll be able to look at the data coming in from the tape drive and then compare it with what is arriving on pin 42 of that large integrated circuit. And this is what it would sound like. Now that sounds pretty crummy, but that's because this tape deck is crummy. The uh, data recorder is of much higher quality. Here we are in Joe's basement with the Mattel Aquarius and the data recorder and Joe has an oscilloscope. Now I've got some tones on this tape. I'll play the tone and see what it looks like on the oscilloscope. Here it is right out of the tape, out of the uh, data recorder. That's what our tone looks like. Now we'll see what it looks like after it goes through those transistors and ends up on pin 42 and we've got nice clean data a nice square wave. So it appears that this chip is toast. Now it won't even boot. I was using it a minute ago and it went kaflooey on me. Bastard! You bastard! Oh, you bastard! Well, let this be a lesson. Don't store your Mattel Aquarius in an unheated garage. Well, thanks for watching part three. If I ever figure out a way to get a computer program out of the laptop and into an Aquarius, I'll make a part four. In the meantime, bye for now.